Kevin, I have invaded your personal space you because because I want to do a special video with you on a patent pending topic, the idea of the perfect lens kit. Okay, I made a video uh, a few years ago, and it was this idea that you need four lenses in your kit to have something that really kind of tells all the stories you'll need it to tell. You get a hero lens, the one that you're going to use most of the time. You need an Alfred a true sidekick lens to kind of complement your storytelling if you had the option to carry a second lens. And let's be honest, Alfred is a much better sidekick than Robin, Yeah. right? You need a challenge lens. This lens that you might not use all the time, but it is something that you can use for a very specific story. It requires more work, more effort. That's what we call it the challenge lens. Okay. And then a fourth spot, the vintage, okay? Yep. Something that is almost unpredictable, untamable. It just has tons of character, right? So yep. those are the four. Let's start with your hero lens. If you had to pick right. just one lens that you could take with you on your next voyage, your trip, what have you, which lens would it be? Why do you have to do this to me, man? Can I just do all this? No, oh, absolutely. Okay, hey, I'm gonna pick one. Right. I'm gonna be doing all of that all later. Right, all right. You gotta pick one. All right, I guess I'll start with probably one of my most used, if not most used lens. Of course, a 50 millimeter. Okay. Right, 50 is my focal length. It's the rigid Summicron here in black paint finish. This has got to be my hero lens, my everyday lens. It's what I sling around me when I'm going out and can use in any situation. Very versatile. Um, the rigid is a good balance of sharpness, but beautiful vintage character. And I can kind of get two looks in one lens. I can stop it down and get that sharpness out of it, but I can open it up, get that beautiful bloom, highlights, put a backlight to it, get a beautiful portrait with rainbow flares, and, and it just, one of the greatest lenses of all time made ever in any camera system, in my opinion. It's just, so I've just heard, phenomenal. I've heard the rigid name, and there's probably a bunch of people on your channel that know a lot about this stuff. But for those that don't, the rigid, tell us about this lens. When, it was, when was it produced? Yep, so the rigid was made in the late 50s, I believe, around 1956, 58. The rigid came out. Uh, it was a second version of the collapsible Summicron, but obviously being rigid, it doesn't collapse. They slightly improved the optical design and the coatings on it. And honestly, even to this day, like I've told you, and like we shot the other day, this lens performs incredibly on a 1954 M3 film and just as well on a brand new M11 or even a monochrome I love it on. Yeah, you handed this to me and you said, hey, stop it down to 5.6 and check yeah. that out on the M11. For on some six, studio stuff, some studio stuff, yeah. On a 60 megapixel sensor and the sharpness is incredible. Yeah. And when you go, you know, when you open it up to F2, it is not unpredictably glowy and you right. don't get too much halation. Yeah. Like it's still within control, yep. but there is a bit of character but, there. But, but you look at it and you go, that's a, that's a vintage look. It's, it, yeah. that, that throws me back to that older kind of filmic time. But yeah, it's just a great balance. And of course, I mean, we gotta talk about the build quality. Just think, pop the thing off the camera. Feel, just feel the, the density. It's, it's a mixture yeah. of brass and aluminum, mostly brass, but this is a very beat up copy. I mean, it's beautiful in black paint, but man, just this lens, if you take care of it, it's going to be functioning just as good on a camera 100 years from now as it is. You know, this lens is 40, 50, 60 years old. Yeah. It's, it's old, right? And uh, man, it's it's not going to ever stop stop performing. You now, know? before we get to the next lens, you know, there's different versions of this lens, right? There There's is. some that are like with black paint. There's yep. some that have some brass or more or less brass. So what, what's sort of the entry point? What's the like the most affordable option? Yep. And then how crazy does it get? Well, I guess this contributes to my hero lens because I'm very lucky to own this in what would be considered the second most desirable, which is a version two in black paint. Um, black paint to me, as you can see here, brassy black paint cameras, it's my love. I love Leica, but man, black paint, showing age and patina, especially something like this, it's just absolutely beautiful. So there's a version one and a version two. They don't vary too much. It's a slight body redesign, and, the, and this is on the version two. It's mainly this, this medium focusing, uh, kind of scallop design in the body there. The version one has a slimmer design. It's just a little bit different. Optically, I think they're pretty much the same optically, just a different coating on them. Right. So honestly, they perform very similarly. Silver is, is gonna be a much more affordable version because they made a lot more of them. Got black it. paint was not necessarily special orders sometimes, but typically black paint cameras and lenses were sold only to professional photographers and they made just way less of them. Right, you know? right, So right, black right. paint is always gonna be Unfortunately, a lot more valuable, but yeah, it's just, to me, it's, nothing's more beautiful than that. Amazing. All right, we got your hero lens. So if you could only have one lens that you could take <laughs> with you on your next trip, we figured that one yes. out. You know what, actually, I'm not gonna do that to your strap over here, okay? I was gonna <laughs> wrap it like how I wrap it. Not that, that's okay, a work of art. Okay. That's a work of art. Now, 
let's say you get to take a second lens with you. You yep. magically have room for one more lens, the Sidekick, the Alfred. Yes. What lens are you bringing with you? It's not a very difficult decision, to be honest. It's gonna be this one right here. It's a 35 millimeter Sumalux a spherical, also known as a double a spherical. Okay. This is one of the most collectible, you could call it like a neo vintage or kind of bordering on modern because this lens came out around 1990, but they only made it for one year, I've been told. And they the estimates are around a thousand to 2000 lenses somewhere in there, maybe in the middle ground. But basically what happened is after I think 40 years, Leica finally redesigned their Subalux. The optics in the steel rim, although the body changed over different generations for different versions, the optics inside didn't change. Maybe some coatings, but generally the rendering was the same. It, it really started to get outdated. Still a beautiful look, but you know the, the optical performance was outdated. They went all in on this lens and even used the original polishing machines that they did with the double spherical Noctilux in the 60s. So this was all made by hand. And what you get when you have a hand polished lens, each copy varies a little bit. It it's, has a little bit different rendering. So each copy, although slight, it varies a little bit. So it's a unique brush. Everyone paints mm. a little differently. So what really made this design unique is double concave front rear elements, the first time ever in a Leica lens, right. and the double a spherical elements, plus being hand ground. This lens still performs as far as like chromatic aberrations better than a modern, even your close focus lens. Right, right. Uh, I've done side-by-side -side tests. Uh, I think Leica Store Miami did a test a while ago, kind of doing that side-by-side. -side. It's remarkable how it performs. Wow. But the Noctilux is one of my favorite rendering lenses, this 0.95, which we'll get to later. This, in my opinion, since they don't make a Noctilux yet, hopefully that comes eventually, but this is a 35 mil Noctilux. That's what I tell people. So for mm. me, getting that, it's sharp enough. It has beautiful character. It's relatively well corrected. You see a photo from this and you can't put your finger on it, but something special. Gotcha. Fantastic. And, and something like this, is there different versions of it? Nope. Or because of its limited quantity, it's just this is the only this version? This one version, yep. Gotcha. And uh, be careful with that lens hood because it costs more than most lenses, unfortunately. <laughs> and it's kind of a piece of crap. It's this plastic hood that doesn't feel very good, but you know, I would appreciate don't, don't lose it. I'd appreciate this information before I took the hood off. Anyway, let's move on. We're going to talk about the challenge lens. So the premise is that this is a lens that's harder to use, that you might not use for every environment, but you know, you could tell a very specific story with it. It can do something that the other two lenses just can't. Definitely. Which one is it? The challenge lens for me is the easiest to pick, but also could maybe fall into some other categories. But for me, it's this beautiful 0.95 Noctilux right here. Nothing gives more of the Leica look than this lens. When you nail a photo with this, there's nothing else on planet Earth, I don't care what anybody says, that looks like this and is as distinguishable as this, especially when you shoot it wide open. It is like, I don't know, such a three-dimensional magic, but it also is challenging to use. Having a 0.95 aperture means the depth of field is incredibly short. So, I mean, you can have the front of an eye in focus and it starts to fall out by the back of the eyeball. It's that short, which is really great. It's a challenge, right? But another challenge, one meter minimum focus distance. Can't get too close, but there's some ways around that. But generally you're at one meter, which makes it very difficult to use. But again, when you nail a photo from this, it's unlike anything else. And you can pick that photo right out of the lineup and say, you know, that's an Octolux shot. Right, right, yeah. right, right. I mean, one of the things we were talking about is that, especially like doing a full body portrait on a scene, and yes. it looks like almost you cut and paste the person onto a scene. Nothing creates, it's, it's weird because you have this juxtaposition of a 50 millimeter field of view on full frame. Right. But it looks so almost fake when the light hits right and you do a full body portrait. Yeah. The isolation you get makes you feel like, you should be shooting a 300 mil lens or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but you're not getting that compression and depth, but it looks so just cut and paste. It's, it's amazing, yeah. Yeah, so and, and, and- 3D the, pop is how I would This lens it. is all, like, it, there's controversy around it, right? Because yes. like the people that don't want to buy in, they're gonna say, oh, it's cost this much, you can get yep. close to it with another lens and all Absolutely. that kind of stuff. But when you use it, and yes. those that have used it, you understand pretty quickly, like, this is something that you save up for, that yes. you earn in some way, and then it's sure. with you for a lifetime. Yes, it it's, is, it's with you for a lifetime, and it lets you create truly unique stories with this. Absolutely, yes. Nothing, nothing renders quite like. I mean, the rigid has a look. The the double spherical, like I was saying, kind of it gives me a thirty five version of this. But yeah. this is the daddy. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. this is the one. It, yeah. it's, it is truly unique. And if anybody sees this and they're 
tempted to buy one and they end up buying one. Yeah. All I say is just give it some time, you know? Yeah. Practice with it, focus, you know? Yeah. And and make sure you really get some of those those images that you nail and you, you will love it for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. It's and worth the wait. It's worth the, the hassle. Here's yes. a, a little inside baseball. We were with you when you got this specific version. So <laughs> you tell, were, us, you were. <laughs> tell us about the versions of the modern Noctilites. How many versions are there? Uh, so there is, as far as limited editions, a few different there's one that they did for the 70th anniversary of Korean independence, if All I right. remember. That's a black paint version. Um, I think arguably this one or this other one I'm gonna talk about is the most beautiful. So the Leica store in Vienna has a special edition where what they did is they actually made the scallop body of the lens kind of look like these older lenses, a throwback, just absolutely beautiful. That's in silver. Right. Um, but for me, this is the ultimate version. This is my holy grail lens. It's the 0.95 Titan. It's an all machined out of billet titanium. It's not a finish. It's not a paint job. It's real titanium. Wow. So for me, they only made a hundred of these. It's the ultimate. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's just a piece of beauty. That's incredible. Functional art. And what I respect about you, sir, and why I'm even considering this video, why we're doing this video, is you are a person that does not leave this in a box. I am crazy you, enough to use it. You shoot the hell out of your lenses. I do. And you've been using this and I, even the people at the Leica store and Leica head office were surprised <laughs> that you're using it. But yeah. you're using it. Yeah, they couldn't believe that, that you know, like, hey, give me a razor blade. Let's let's enjoy this. Let's pass it around. Let's share the passion. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I, unfortunately, well, I mean, I understand. I get the collecting. Some people, that's what they like to do. I don't have anything against that. But yeah. for me, it's about enjoying it, using it, sharing it, and at the end, taking photos with it. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think one of the things I enjoy most is when someone sees a Leica camera for the first time, especially someone that's a, a more junior shooter, whatever it may be, and then putting it in their hands, let them play around with it, let yep. them use it, experience it, and like just seeing people react to it. You see fun. that you see that hook going in there. That's it. <laughs> There's nothing they can do about it. Yeah. I mean, you just once you feel that and you experience it, that's all these are amazing. Yeah, and then I yeah. send them my affiliate link and <laughs> hey, business as usual. Exactly. All right, let's talk about the last one. Okay. And this is hard because the it's last category one. is called vintage, right? I think yes. every camera kit you should have some sort of vintage option. Yep. You got a bunch to choose from. So if you can round out the <sighs> so kit tough. And, and you can only pick one vintage option, yep. which would it be? So I'm limiting myself a little bit here because I'm going to pick another 35. So we're going to get we're doing 250s and 235s. But I think something that is very different than this, bordering on modern but having a little bit of character, it's going to be this steel rim right here. So whether it's one with goggles like this or one without goggles, this is the ultimate character lens. And no offense to the remake, it's great. But something about this, if you, if you talk to people that own the remake and the vintage one, I think it's the coatings, and, and I think it's, again, kind of going back to even like the double spherical. These are all handmade, right? They right. all render a little different. They all have their own painting signature. Right. But I'm telling you, when you shoot this lens backlit for a portrait, yeah. <laughs> flaring and just burst of color and explosion of character is unlike any lens, especially in the 35. So that's why Leica calls this the real king of bokeh right. in a 35, because it is really special. It's not for everyone. It's incredibly soft, wide open, you know? Yeah. You want you really need to center your subject if you want them sharp. Um, but as far as like giving you the ultimate vintage look, which, you know, you could argue what it is, but I think I think the ultimate vintage look is something that has just that character. You okay. know? So th this is that this is that for me. So is there different versions to consider? So again, you're picking the one, yeah. the original one, yep. right? Is there different versions of the original? Yeah, so what I was saying when I was talking about the double spherical, the cool thing is you don't have to spend this much on this crazy expensive one. Of course, like I'm saying, in my opinion, the original one has right. just a two, three percent of something special. Yeah. But I mean, you can go with a, a, a remake, but also you can do any 35 Prius spherical Sumalux. Right. Although it looks different, it's not the steel rim, it doesn't have the collectability, and there's slight differences in coatings, you, the optical design is the same. So for mm. a fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollars, you can buy a prehispheric Sumalux and get some of that beautiful glow. Try this on some cine still. Shoot some lights. Yeah, yeah. Cine still where you get some of that blooming. Also really beautiful. That's incredible, yeah. man. All right, so let's recap your four lenses. Your hero lens. The main one is fifty rigid Sumacron. Okay. Your yep. Alfred. Your sidekick. Thirty five double spherical. Okay. Your challenge lens. It's got to be the Noctilux. 
50, another 0.95, 50 in there, yep. and your vintage. Ultimate character, the original steel rim or any prehistoric Sumo Lex. Amazing, 235s, 250s. That's it. Kevin, this is uh, on your channel, so we don't need to tell people where to find <laughs> your stuff because exactly. they're already here. Exactly. Um, I think the more interesting thing is like, you don't get time to make these videos. You yeah. just, it's just a lot of things going on. Yep. So what we should tell people to do is let us know in the comments what video you'd like to see Absolutely. you make. And then next year, we'll see another video from <laughs> yes, you. Yes, we will. Amazing. Thank Definitely. you for your time. Thank, Thank you, you so guys much. for watching. And yep. uh, yeah, let's go, let's go shoot some photos with this stuff. Sounds good. Perfect.